All right, you're watching New Car Spin. I'm your host, Brian, and this is the 2021 Lexus LC500 with the nice V8. You can see this interior is pretty spacious and is, well, full of curves. This actually right here was designed to be shaped like a leaf. It's pretty cool. But the coolest part, obviously, is the overall package here. So why don't we go get some coffee and uh, I'll show you what this is all about. So the LC500 is something that I've always called the best car Lexus ever made. And this is the fourth LC500 I've had to review. The first one was the hybrid, which is somehow more expensive than the V8 version. The second one was the V8 version, which is just like this one. The third one was the convertible. And now I'm back into the best one, which is the V8 coupe with four wheel steering. And it has a performance package with the carbon fiber roof. It has a limited slip differential. What makes this car so special is the way it looks, the way it sounds, the way it drives. It's just everything you'd expect a Lexus Coupe to be. And it really ups the game. When you get into one of these cars, it lets you forgive Lexus for doing things like making the RX or still making the LX or the GX or even the NX. This is just a great car to be in. It looks good. It has the Alcantara headliner. It just has everything going for it. And the best part is it's actually very capable of being a daily driver. And well, once I get my coffee, I'll tell you exactly why I'm driving this car for a fourth time. So the coolest part about this car is that it is, well, it's kind of built for a different time. You can see we have auto hold and that holds you at well, a stop when you're in something like a drive through line here. So it, it's automatically something that you probably wouldn't do in a Ferrari or a Porsche, a Lamborghini. You basically can daily drive this and not be driven crazy by all the little idiosyncrasies that come with a pure uh, exotic kind of car, even though this is a very exotic looking car. And you'll notice too, when you come to a complete stop, the engine stays on. There is no engine stop start nonsense. There's no defeat button for it because it doesn't exist. In the V8 version, you don't have to deal with that as opposed to the hybrid where it's a V6 and it has a CVT and a regular auto. The V8 here just makes more sense. Well, coffee time. And so what you end up with is a car that you can daily drive and it's comfortable you can actually go down here move that down and all of a sudden you're in comfort mode and the drive response all that stuff changes and it becomes more and more comfortable than it already is and that's incredible because we have extremely nice seats that have great venting you still get to hear the luscious v8 which is this typical 471, 472, 470 horsepower, a naturally aspirated V8 that you would also find in the RCF and the GSF. And well, it's a pretty good staple engine for the Lexus brand and it's probably going away. So the LC500 is the best example of what you can get in this brand vehicle and this is interesting right because this is the summer of 2021 and there's this thing called a chip shortage where manufacturers can't build cars because the chips don't exist and there's a shortage of new cars to buy however if you can't get your 911 and you can't get your Aventador well they stop making that if you can't get your guy what is it not the Gallardo the Hurricane or the 911 or whatever, uh, this is the last car on earth you can buy. And you know how there's always that thing like, oh, I wouldn't marry you or I wouldn't whatever you if you were the last person on earth. Mm -hmm. 
So my thing is, well, what if you, what if you had a choice to make and this LC500 was the last car on earth to buy? And my answer, of course, is number one, yes. And number two, I would ask, why is this the last car on earth to buy? And actually, how awesome is that, that right now, the only real sports car left, the only GT, the 2 plus 2, because there is a back seat, how come it's only this car? Well, it's because it keeps getting overlooked. It's, it keeps getting underrated. And I think that this car here is the best way to figure out how to get a GT Sporty Coupe that is comfortable, luxurious, and still exotic. So let's get to a spot where I can kind of do a walk around and pop the hood and show you everything it's all about. Let's put it back in normal mode. Oh, that Starbucks is totally over roasted and way too overdosed for me. But uh, now what we can do is we can move this up into sport mode and you'll see we get the indication that we're in sport. And it definitely moves off the line better. Sorry, we're facing the sun here, so the instrumentation and the dash and everything is harder for me to shoot like this. But I do like the fact that this car really does do what it says on the package. I mean, you look at the the rear haunches, you look at the rear wing, and you see that sloped, long nose, and you just put your foot down, and it moves. And I'm not gonna say it's uh, the fastest car you can get. I'm not gonna say that it is the, uh, the best car you can get. But if you look at the package, the overall total concept, it is the most appealing in my mind. Of course, like it's not a 911, right? Uh, that That's a totally different kind of car. That is, you can get a different kind for a different purpose, right? The GT3 RS versus the 911 versus the Targa, you know, just 911 base, obviously. So you just have all these different options. But on this Lexus, it's trying to be all things to all people. And they've actually done a very good job doing that. Let me see if I can find a parking lot. Or a street, actually. Let's do a street. I have a street in mind. It's probably gonna be called the next street here. Any second. Here we are. With four wheel steering, it corners nicely. This thing actually feels like it's not an electromechanical servo style steering. It feels like it loads up. It's it's already heavy, and when you put it in different modes, it feels different. But I think I have a good spot here. Let's turn around, make a U turn. It's a real tight turning vehicle. It does not mess around. Okay, so right here is a good one. Perfect. I just had this car wash last night, so it's going to look really good. Check out that carbon fiber. You notice the door handles too, they're flush with the car, Aston Martin style. So it's just a lot of cues, I think they took a lot of cues from all the sports cars that everybody likes. And they took all the best pieces of it all. There's the trunk, by the way. So it's not exactly the roomiest trunk. It's not very deep. It's about <laughs> that deep. So uh, not even, well, maybe a foot deep. And you will struggle to get some things in this car, but as a daily, you know what I mean? It's, it's basically for going to and from your office or uh, enjoying a weekend with these wheels nice polished and painted pockets 
brakes are a pretty good size. But I can't stop looking at it. It just looks really good. I'm trying to get my way across here, okay? Boom. Man, this is a really shiny car. Whoever washed this did a really good job. Look at that. So, there's not much to uh, talk about in terms of like extra important technology. Uh, we do have the radar. We do have the radar cruise. And... Uh, you know, it doesn't have 360 degree camera view. It's it's not like the latest of the latest. And I, it might be able to, to, to be possible to have them add it uh, at a, you know, at a refresh or an update, which this is probably due for any day now. But you gotta love these LED headlights, which are really, really nice at night. It's just, they thought about everything when they made this car. In terms of daily practicality you'll even see and I I, I did I give somebody a ride who sat in the back here and and it's really a two plus two but you can only get some person to sit across the back but the beauty of that is you see this little hump here on some sports cars that are two plus two that hump is as high as this center armrest which means that nobody can sit across the back seat you really are limited to nobody sitting in the back. So here, you know, they've integrated the subwoofer there, which is, by the way, Mark Levinson, which is fantastic. You're actually able to get at least a person back here who might even be tall. So that's a good thing to uh, have. And you'll see the, the seat belts are opposite to where they would normally be. Normally the, the, the belts would be on the outside of, of the seats and instead they're they're inboard and then they buckle on the out corner. So you have more flexibility here. You can actually grab a belt and buckle somebody in rather than grab this belt and try and buckle someone in way over there. You can buckle it right here. I can reach it from, without having to get in the car. So that makes it very easy to make sure that if you've got little ones back there, you can strap them in. So there we go. We've got a very useful, very roomy interior. The only issue I have here is when you set the seat back, it goes all the way back, and that's because it has that ingress, egress mode on, so you can turn that off. And turning it off means that you don't have to worry about jamming somebody back there. So if you disable that system, the seat won't move back and forward every time you get in and out of the car, but at least you've ensured that you're not ruining anybody's day. All right, so, let's see. What do we have here? We have a great instrumentation. The LED or LCD display moves with that, that, um, that bezel there. And then we can see our navigation. We can go through different trip computer items. We can go through our settings. Wait, what did that say? Oh, that was a trip there. Oh yeah, we've got our G-forces and sway warning tire pressure monitor everything looks pretty good there so you know that's something to uh enjoy on spare oh uh, yeah okay we have our settings here it's just overall the, the car just has everything you need to enjoy it on a daily basis and then have some fun and there is a convertible version but uh the hybrid is the elephant in the room here's our uh trunk disable so that if you valet or whatever, or if you park the car for a long time, I guess. Um, let's hit the road again. One thing I do is, is I find myself wanting to drive this car because of the Mark Levinson stereo. You can see the little logo there. It's actually controlled here. And this is really convenient because your arm's always down here anyway, and this is kind of like a thumb wheel mouse. And you can go between pulling this into manual, putting it into drive, and then here you have some buttons up front for media and radio, so you just hit them there and the screen will react. So it's not a touch screen, thankfully, because it's a pretty long reach, but you're able to scroll over, change your tracks, and then get to the map, things like that. So 
you know, you could zoom in. It's pinched to zoom like this. So it's very convenient. And then we have our menu system. So you can get into all these things. So I've, I've complained about this car not having any heated seat or cooled seat buttons in the HVAC system. But what you do is you go right here to concierge. And when you enable that, you can enable this right here, which is the concierge. So depending on the temperature, and if anybody's in uh, the passenger seat or the driver's seat, it will adjust the heated seats or the cooled seats. And if you adjust your temperature, it will make the changes to the fan speeds or the, or the intensity of the heated seats as you're in the car. And if once you turn that on, it stays on when you, even when you get back in. So you're, you're, uh, you're always going to have uh, an ability to get in the car and drive it and not have to fiddle around with any of these settings. You just get to focus on this area here, which is the important part. So let me get my seatbelt on and we'll hit the road again. All right, so obviously we start up in normal mode. We can go down to comfort, down to eco, right? And by turning this knob, we can go up to sport and then up once again to sport plus. And then we have charger control off if we push in there, but I don't want to do it today. The tires are still kind of cold. So uh, there's a snow mode as well, which I obviously haven't tried here in Texas. Uh, it is July, but now we have a really cool display. It's a lot like the LFA supercar that they used to make. And well, let's hit the road. Electronic parking brakes. So there are fewer things for me to do other than just enjoy the drive. All right, one of my favorite things is getting on the freeway. And what I like is not having to do will stop start. So in Sport Plus, when you brake harder, it automatically downshifts and you hear that blip. It's just such a hot thing to do. I love that sound. It, it's just a very shouty car. It, it's not as shouty as maybe the the uh, Jag uh, F-Type, but this, this is a bit bigger than that car. So if you're looking at the F-Type and you're, you're looking at the, at the SVR or something, you know, this car comes in at 102 with these options, $10,000, which is that performance package. I'll show you the window sticker in one second once we get off here. And, uh, you know, I do like, I do like the F-Type. It is a little small, but, you know, between the two, there, there really is no comparison uh, when you're going V8 to V8. Um, sure, there are more, more powerful V8s than this Lexus, but... If you think about reliability, you know, do you really want the expense of those Ferraris or the Lamborghinis or the extra insurance costs? Or do you just want to get away with having an exotic looking, supercar looking coupe that's a two plus two that you could drive through every day? And then if you if you really feel like it, you can go back down into comfort mode. Or I don't recommend eco mode actually. There we go. And now the suspension softens up the steering, especially because it's four wheel steering. Oh, just got a text from the Lexus actually. Let's see, ignore. So from that point, you actually have the ability to uh, really enjoy the car in all situations, which, you know, how much of that can you save for other, other exotic looking cars? the window sticker hopefully it's easily accessible oh yeah i can reach the glow box button from here but it's in an envelope somewhere uh, let me get it actually what we'll do is we'll pull over this way let me get you that I think when you put it in park, it automatically 
straightens out the steering because I've never seen this four wheel steering, even when it's fully cranked, uh, actually at a turn. So let's put it in park. All right, here we go. 471 horsepower, okay. 10 speed auto, uh, 20 inch, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so our options, we're down to the all weather package, which is just heated steering wheel and the windshield de-icer, which, uh, I don't know how, how important that is for you. This is the important part, the Mark Levinson sound system which is really, really good. I wanna drive this car all the time just to listen to the stereo. That's only 1200 bucks. And uh, the heads up display, you don't really need. Uh, that's a $900 option. Dynamic handling package. Okay, so I, I was calling it the performance package. 21 inch wheels. I've never seen it without these wheels actually. And uh, variable gear ratio steering, speed activated rear wing, intuitive parking assist. So. Yes, you might not like this color interior. You might want a black interior, but this is sort of like very traditional uh, Italian-like color. Let's just call it that, and I like it a lot. But I don't necessarily want to spend an extra 9,700 bucks. So you can get away with getting this car for under 95,000 if you omit the dynamic handling package or you omit the heads-up display. And I wouldn't miss those items, actually. I've, I've driven the convertible without the four-wheel steering. What you do want to get, though, is the uh, limited slip rear diff, which used to be like a $300 option. I don't see it on here anymore. I see it. Yep. Where is it? I don't know. Glass breakage sensor. I mean, you'll probably only ever need that once, but, you know, there it is. Total price, 107 so this is five grand more than the RCF Fuji that we drove. Yale drove uh, RCF Fuji for a week. I drove this for the week. So that was my choice. 25 highway. And yeah, pretty pretty nice car overall. And I have to say, uh, I'm gonna miss this thing. They pick it up in about 10 minutes. So I've really been juicing it for all it's worth here. Uh, driving it every day and really loving it. So please like, subscribe, comment, do all that fun YouTube stuff so that they can, uh, YouTube can show more of my videos to more people. And uh, the next car <laughs> is the Toyota Corolla hatchback. So uh, yeah, there's obviously no comparison, but I will miss this car again. And I think I will buy one of these one day. I just, I just need more space for it. So just an awesome, awesome car. All right, thanks for watching.